In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Christ is risen. We live in a world today where anyone merely listening, watching the news has a sense that there is something off. The world, for all its advancement, for all the progress we have made, still feels like it needs something. There is always that one thing that still needs to be fixed. There's always a need for even more progress. There is still further injustice. There is still a sense of enslavement. There is still a sense of something broken that needs to be healed. There is always a sense that this world needs to be changed. And we might be thinking that there's something wrong right now. But the reality is that this is how the world always has been. There's always been the sense that the world is messed up. There's always been the sense that something needs to change. And there's always been revolutionaries. And there's always been people who thought we can change the world and make it a better place. Because the systems are messed up or there are evil people who need to be removed from power, or these things need to be fixed so that we can have a better society. An interesting story that happened maybe about, actually more than 100 years ago, when the communists took over Russia and they you know, got rid of the monarchy, and they completely uprooted the church. So early on, they would go out into the villages, like the people who were in charge of the Communist Party, they would go out into the villages, and they would start to talk to the local people in each village about how they are now set free from the oppression of, you know, Okay, I'm going to use the technical language, the bourgeoisie and all that kind of fancy schmancy stuff about the horrors of capitalism and now you are set free as, you know, the labor, you know, the workers of the world are now going to be rising from the shackles of all that sort of stuff. And you are now also set free from the shackles of the superstition of religion. So they walked into one of these towns in Russia, in rural Russia, with all these, you know, very simple, very, you know, almost uneducated peasants. And they started talking to them about all this. You know, you've lived under the oppression of, you know, the capitalist this and the ignorance of the religious that. And now communism has come and set you free. And then at the very end, they said, does anyone want to say anything? And Someone raised his hand and he said, I'd like to say a few words. And then the, the party r r rulers, you know, sort of the party leader said, well, you have to be very brief. And uh, the peasant said, well, I don't think I'm going to need more than one minute, maybe even less. So he said, okay, you can come up and say something. So the peasant walked up to the podium where the, that party leader stood and he just faced the entire community. And then with the loudest voice, he yelled, you know, he said with his loudest voice, Christos Anesti. And then everyone in the congregate, you know, they, everyone in the, in the village yelled back and said, Alithos Anesti. He said, thank you. And he went and sat down. The reality is that cry that, man's, that man said is what sustained the Christian faith 
in communist Russia for the 70 years that they were under persecution. And we need to understand as well that while we live here in supposed prosperity and all the amazing privileges that we live in here, there is still under the surface the sense that people are feeling the thirst. People are feeling a need. People are feeling that there's an emptiness. And that is, that is why we see around us a lot of people feeling the appeal of different ideas. Why, for example, we see the political turmoil that we see around us today. A lot of the polarization and a lot of the anger that's going around that you see in social media and you see in, you know, in the political climate we're in or in the general society, people are more angry, people are more upset. As we would say in Arabic, no one can stand themselves, no one can stand anyone else. Everyone's walking around, you just, all you need to just poke them and they explode. Road rage, you know, they see the signs now everywhere while you're driving on the highway. The biggest warnings these days are about road rage. All you need to do is just maybe look like you're cutting someone off and they'll probably drive five miles just to honk at you or something. What is that? That is a thirst. A sense of emptiness. So what's Christ's, Christ's response to that? His response to that is the words that I speak to you are spirit and life. Now we have to understand that. We tend to think, even if we're not going to go into political, ideological issues, on a personal level we will, see, we will say sometimes, I would be happy if only. I would have a better life if only these people around me would do X, Y, Z. I would be happy if only my circumstances. I would have a better life if only this person would do that. As if every single problem in my life would be better if only everyone around me would be a better person. If only people around me would be more loving. If only the people around me would behave better. If only the people around me would care more. If only the people around me would appreciate me more. And the list is endless. The system needs to be changed. The people around me need to be better. The community around me need to be better. And so on, and so on, and so on. The Samaritan woman goes to fill her well, her, her, goes to fill her own water jar in the middle of the day when no one else is going to show up because she's sick of her community. She's tired of the community that continues to judge her. Her life would be so much better if only she didn't have to deal with the community. And even when she meets Christ himself, who's going to give her the words of life, she keeps going back and forth. Well, you don't have something to pull up water with. Well, it looks like you're a prophet. You know, our father said this. Well, when the Messiah comes, but when does the solution finally come? I'll say this again. We, we live in a world today where we... The world wants from Christianity two false things. The world wants from our faith, or we sometimes want from our Christian faith two things which are false. We either want the Christian faith, we either want our Christianity to fix the problems of the world, and we turn our Christian faith into merely a social gospel, something about 
fixing the injustices of the world, and if it's not quote-unquote relevant, then we think, what good is it? Or, we want the faith to make me feel good. We want it to make me feel better when everything else is messed up in this world. And if it doesn't make me feel better, then again, what good is it? But that's not the Christian faith, by the way. The Christian faith is starting with that uncomfortable experience when the Samaritan woman says to Christ, I want that water so that I don't have to come here every day to fill my, my water pot. She wants that comfort. And then what is the response that Christ gives her? Go and call your husband. And then she suddenly has to come face to face with the fact that, oops, I don't have a husband. And then, of course, Christ, because he's loving and kind, says, well, yes, you're right. You don't have a husband. You've had five husbands before, and the one you're living with right now isn't your husband. That's a very uncomfortable truth. And we each have to come face to face with the uncomfortable truth of where we're at. That is the Christian faith. The resurrected Jesus Christ will not give us the true living life rising from the death of our sin and rising from the horrible reality that is our life. That's not going to happen until we come face to faith with our own death. That's not going to come to us by just simply thinking that, oh, Jesus, give this to me. Give me the water. He'll give it to us. He wants to give it to us. The resurrection is given freely, but it has to be given when we want to get rid of the other things that are taking up space inside of us. And we saw that in the Samaritan woman when she finally let go. We see her running back into the town to tell the people about Christ. And she left behind the water pot. She left it behind. Why? Because she doesn't need it anymore. Now, what does that mean practically for us? What are we willing to let go behind? What are we willing to really admit about what's wrong with ourselves? What are we willing, when are we willing to stop pointing the finger at everything around us that is wrong and start admitting to Christ that we are the ones who are wrong so that he can give us a resurrection? And then, instead of seeking to hear words from people that will give us comfort, that we seek his words that will give us everlasting life. Christ is risen. No, that's a little feeble. Christ is risen. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen.
with my favorable schoolman. Can you and my son? Can you and my son are known with me? We believe in one God, God the Father, Pantocrator, Creator of heaven and earth, and all things seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, 